Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. This video is going to be 46B. Now, 46 Part A was the test fitting of the Vintage Air Front Runner system on the Brooklyn Pony, the 66 Mustang that I'm building basically from all new panels. In that video, I talked about the issues I had with the bolt holes being different between the housing, how I remedied that. So if you haven't seen that video, go back to that video to get initiated into this video. I want to point out a few things. In that first video, I mentioned or I talked about taking this measurement. All right, and this is a diagram on the Vintage Air uh, instructions. And it's a little confusing using a combination square and a straight edge. Well, I did that measurement. However, I made a mistake. The measurement they're requiring or asking for is four, well, I'll point this out again. This says 4.725, and it says four and three quarters over here in parentheses. I went with the four and three quarters, and I, I, did, it in, I did the right measurement, but I read the wrong side of the scale. Basically, you know, if I take this and I were to use it for a depth measurement, so this is the block, and I had used this other ruler and, you know, used this on the front edge of the balancer. Well, I misread it because I read to the front edge of this ruler rather than this face. So the measurement is actually three and three quarters. I had somebody ask me about that and a couple of people comment. So, good catch. Uh, I should, uh, oh, wait a minute. Good catch. <laughs> okay. So that addresses that measurement. Now, the other problem that I ran into was the balancer. And I mentioned in the video that using a tape measure, I did a rough cross measurement and I said it was six and five eighths inches, which is too big to fit the water pump and the bracket for some reason. So I got out my big caliper and if I do a squared off measurement, the actual dimension uh, diameter is 6.612. Okay, 6.612 if you can see that okay. So I also mentioned that obviously needs a smaller one. I haven't addressed that yet and I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm, they make these, there's other there's manufacturers that sell these in various sizes. I'll point out as well that this engine is internally balanced. So it's not as critical to get, you know, you, obviously it is critical, but it's you can use a standard balancer um, instead of one that's balanced to the crank. Hope that makes sense. Now, another thing I want to point out. I had somebody ask me a question. And in the instructions, it talks about taking the front runner piece, the big aluminum piece, and going to a machine shop to install the crankshaft seal. Well, I did not mention anything beyond that because I didn't think about it. I always try to do things my own way. And I did install that crankshaft seal, but I didn't film it. And I'm going to show you how I did it, even though I can't take the part out of the car, I can still use the housing that came off of the engine and give you some idea of how I did that. And I used my vise, my bench vise, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now this video, what I want to do, I want to keep making progress on this project. So I am going to fit the compressor, the alternator, the power steering pump, Anything I have that's in the box, I want to get those on the car and make sure that they're, you know, everything's going to fit. The next thing I want to do is pull out the Griffin radiator. Now, I've already done a video on the modifications that I made to the core support for that radiator to fit the car. So I know the radiator is going to fit, but I want to fit or set the radiator in place to make sure it doesn't interact with any of the hardware or components from the front runner system. Another thing I need to do is make sure the condenser, I can get it in place. I want to be able to have everything 
set up so that when everything is painted and finished, it's a matter of just bolting these pieces back on. That's why, as I recommend in any of the videos, test fit, test fit, test fit, correct problems as you get, go along, and whenever it comes to the end, everything should, should just fit right together. So I'm going to try to address that as well in this video. So let me show you what I was talking about with the seal and how I put it in, and then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, I'd like to think outside the box when I need to. So what I did is I took this piece of one inch square tubing and I taped it to the back side of the vise, to the rigid side part of the vise. And then, as I opened up the vise, I needed to be able to set that uh, housing in here, but I didn't want it to fall in. So I took blocks of wood on this side, underneath, and I supported this bar. So while it was taped to the jaw, I also had some wood underneath it to keep it from falling down. So that's what I used as the back side of the support so that the main that housing went against it. So this would be the side that was facing towards the engine. Then what I did, and let me show you this, I have this Maddox front wheel bearing removal and installation kit that adapter kit or whatever that I've used on various projects I used one of the plates out of that kit and if I use this as a reference I placed it against the seal and it gave me something to press against so ultimately when I had that bar back here, and I had this squared up, you know, the housing, I just I used this as a press. I just cranked it in, and it pressed in nice and straight, and I had no issues with it. So hopefully um, you can find that helpful. I did actually take some pictures, I think. So maybe I can show those as well in this video. Okay, let's move on. Before I go forward with test fitting those other pieces, I want to show you this. When I did the mock-up for the idea steering column, I did not have a gauge cluster. I borrowed this one from a friend so that I would have a bezel. And where I have the steering column right now, it just clears. So I can probably gain another eighth inch or so and be good. So that's a good thing. I'm happy to have at least that now working out. Okay, so I'm going to start with the compressor. It points out in the instructions that it's going to be installed using two 5 16 AN flat washers and two 5 16 by 18 nylon nuts. Uh, compressor fitting cover, one that will come later, and then two 5 16 18 by 4 and a quarter bolts. So it's just showing those holding it all together. Should be fairly simple. There's your wire coming out the back there. Now I'm just going to loosely put this together. I don't want to torque anything down. So I'll put the washers on and these nylock nuts, of course, if you run those in. But I'm just going to put finger tight tension on them. I like that. That's a lot better than the thing I had to build for a 68 Mustang I did years ago at the shop. I mod heavily modified a bracket to make a compressor do almost the exact same thing. So I like that. Now, the next thing it talks about is putting on the tubes. I'm not going to do that because to do that I have to take this plate off and that's going to expose this to the air I don't want that to happen right now. But if I do that, see if I follow their diagram here, there's, there's a, a recessed area down below right here if you can see. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. I 
Yeah, you can see right there, there's a recess cutout for the tubes. So if this were in place and bolted in to the compressor up here, those two tubes would be held in place by that cutout. The next part of that is this fitting. Let me back that up. This is basically a clamp. You know, this was in the packaging when I first took this apart, and I thought, boy, that's odd. What is that for? Well, it's going to go down here, and it looks like it's the same. No, nope. one side is actually fatter than the other. One side has a fatter curve on it. So you have to, the fatter curve looks like it's towards the engine. So if I were to just put that on there, it threads in with an Allen head or hex head and locks in the tubes. So that's pretty cool. And there you can see the, the drawing. Next up is the alternator. Now it's saying use a 3 8 16 by 4 and a quarter bolt on the upper mount. The lower mount is 5 16, 5 16 by you know 18 by 1 and a quarter. So that's easy enough. Nice. Now it's calling for the belt tensioner. And this takes a 3 8 16 by 2 and a half. And has these guides and they're different sizes. So the posts on the back side here are different sizes. So it only fits one way, which is very nice. And I'll point out, it does not talk about a washer in the instructions. It's just saying put this straight in. That works. At this point, the instructions say to install the crankshaft pulley and the water pump pulley. Well, obviously I can't do the crankshaft pulley, but I can do the water pump. And it the pulley is held on by four, five sixteenths, twenty-four by three quarter inch bolts. This is probably the only fine thread bolts in the kit, I believe. Here's the part number for the pulley for the water pump. And I'll point this out. It's got a recess on the back side. So you'd have a hard time putting it on because it would stick out, you know, and be way out of line. But fits perfect. I'll give him credit for that, that's for sure. And I'll just put in a couple of the bolts. Now again, I can't put on the crankshaft pulley, so I'll have to skip that part. Now it says to install the power steering pump. This is the part number for the pump, if you're curious. And now let me show you what it says on the instructions. It has a, uh, a written warning, or however you want to say it. But it does say warning. The pulley must be installed with the proper tool. It gives a KD part number or equivalent. equivalent. Do not attempt to hammer or press the pulley onto the power steering pump shaft. Failure to use the proper tool will destroy the pump. Also points out, a high pressure fitting not included with this kit is required for hose connection. Several options are available through vintage air. See additional parts and accessories on page 3. TC power steering pump flow rate is 3 to 3.4 gallons per minute at 1500 RPM. For rack and pinion systems that require a lower flow rate, a flow control valve is your part number may be purchased to reduce the flow to two gallons per minute again more parts list so I'll have to install that pulley later but I'm just going to put the pump on okay install the power steering pump using two 5 16 18 by three and a half stainless steel bolts two and flat washers and two nylock nuts as shown in figure 11 so
Very nice. Very nice. Sure wish I had a good crank pulley, but that'll have to come later. Let me point out a couple little things. There's a couple of hex head bolts in the kit. I wasn't sure where those went, but they go into the flange for the tubing that mounts to the compressor. So those sit nice and flush. Very nice. There's also four bolts remaining. Those, I believe, would go into the crank pulley that would bolt to the balancer, but can't put those on. Two other items. This is a cover for the compressor, so it goes up there. And then this is a cover for the tensioner. Of course, I'm not going to put those on yet either. Okay, if you've been following along, you've seen this before. This is that radiator from Griffin. And again, I've already mocked up everything, modified the core support to support this. But, uh, already has the fan built in. So I'm going to get this mounted. And then we'll go on to mocking up, I guess, the condenser and stuff like that. So, this is next. Plenty of room. That's great. That's a good, I mean, a good three and a half, maybe, maybe about three, three inches or so in between. Very good. Okay. Now, I can try to figure out this condenser. Because I know I've got to get some lines to go through the firewall somewhere. So I'll have to make modifications at some point. Okay, here's the instruction sheet. 64 and a half to 66 Ford Mustang condenser kit with dryer with passenger side connections. So I've already gone through inventory sheet. And gives you some information here. I'm not going to read over all this, but it talks about the capacities, safety switches, service info. I'm not going to read over all that stuff. Now, it does, uh, well, bolts passing through Callan firewall. They need to be sealed with silicone. Little things like that, but you can read that in the instructions. Okay. This is representing the opening seen there. It's talking about the overall width being 22 and a half and that's where the uh, the metal kind of transitions it's got a you know it's got an area that's pressed in for the radiator to mount to so it's talking about that being the width and then 18 inches being the actual opening also over here it talks about 16 and 15 and a half inches and again I believe that is talking about the actual opening for the for this car since I modified it to take this radiator, which is larger, the recessed areas, it's actually 23 and a quarter, so plenty of room. Uh, the opening, the actual opening is 20 and a half, which is far over the 18, so that's fine. And then, of course, the 16. It's talking about that, or 15 and a half. This one's actually reading 16 at the, where it rolls in. And then if you drop down to where the actual opening is, it is 15 and a quarter. So it's actually a little bit smaller. I have not modified this part of the opening. I did the width. So 
now that we know that, we can move on to some of the instructions here. Now, I've already removed the hood latch mechanism. It's on the floor right here. And this, of course, would mount right there. With that off, and it's just talking about the two upper bolts here and the lower bolt, remove it. Uh, that's part of the process. Well, then it talks about drilling a hole one and a quarter inch in diameter into the core support as shown in this figure. So this showing it from the passenger side, but it's like it's looking forward because here's a little vents that are represented over here. So basically you'd have to flip that around. But it's giving you some dimensions and it's saying off of, it says bend. So I don't know if you're talking, I guess you're talking about this flange. Well there's a little bend right here. Transition bend. Um, and inch and three eighths off of this edge I'm assuming where it starts this transition this way. I'm not going to drill any holes yet. And the reason for that is I want to verify how this is going to fit first. So the condenser talks about putting on this upper bracket. It gives you a hole count. If you look at the drawing, you have the fittings on one side. And then you do a hole count and you attach this upper plate and you attach this lower plate. Both of those are in the kit. So there's the upper plate and the lower plate. This one is going to attach to that center bolt at the bottom and these two will go up at the top where that uh, bracket mounts. So I can get those in place. That's really simple. We just count out the holes and attach it shows it putting it in place and then bolting it in again fairly simple and then here this is this is where I will use the tubing that is in the kit to verify the location of that hole I would rather have this in place and then figure out this hole than to make that hole and realize something's off just the way I operate so hopefully I can come up with some dimensions using that tubing. So I'm, I'm not going to film putting those little brackets on. I'll get those in place and then I'll mount the condenser. Okay, so as you saw in the time lapse, simply bolted it together. Things lined up just fine. And now I want to check on making the hole. As it says in the instructions, if you, if I follow that guideline, it says off of where it starts to bend, which I'm going to assume is talking about this right here, it needs to be an inch and three eighths, and then actually it says crease, it calls that a crease. But down here at the bottom it says bend, okay? And I think that's that transitional bend right here is what they're going by. So if I do an inch and three eighths, and then if I go off of that bend, as they call it, I guess, it says seven eighths. So Seven inches there. So essentially, if I'm reading that correctly, it's telling me to put a one and a quarter inch hole right there. Well, what I want to do is I can look at these tubes and kind of align them with where they mount. Okay? And I can I can kind of square up with those and come to the conclusion that's pretty close. I know the angle of the camera is different than what I'm what I'm seeing because it's the camera's a little bit higher. 
But with this in on plane with the fitting, that's pretty close. And here, the lower one, uh, it's going to mount. It's harder to measure that way, but it's it's registering a little bit higher. So I'm going to start with a hole <laughs> that's going to be pretty close to that location and we'll see what what happens. I mean, I could take these caps off and take this apart, put the fit lines on and, and feed it through and get an idea later, but at this point that's kind of where I'm at, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's close. We'll, we'll find out. I just want to show you this because I always try to find ways to double check how things fit. And what I did, just kind of experimenting here, but if I took a straight edge, and I noticed that in this case the welded in or soldered in nut on the top mount there, if I were to kind of plane this out and make it level, that actually is very close on that hole where I have the X or the crosshairs. If I do the same thing on the bottom, I can plane that out make it basically level and the same thing. Oh, I know you can't really see that, can you? Let me try a different angle. Maybe this is better. Okay, so looking at this backwards for me, if I were to set this on that top mount point and just kind of plane this across, square it up, then that whole location is pretty close. If I do that with the bottom one, and I feel kind of backwards doing this because I'm... <laughs> there you go. So now you can kind of see that that's pretty close. That's pretty close. So now it says to drill an inch and a quarter hole. Well, I don't have an inch and a quarter bit or anything that's going to make an inch and a quarter hole. So I'm going to take a washer that's an inch and a quarter and I'm just going to draw a circle around it to give me a reference point. Now, knowing that the hole is meant to be an inch and a quarter, I want to verify that all I want to remove is material inside the hole. I'm not going to you know, go to the black line. I'll go inside the hole a little bit and I'm just going to take a small drill bit and I'll drill all the way around and just weaken up that area and then angle the drill bit basically to break loose the tabs and then I'll come back in with either a sanding disc or a rotary file, something along those lines and smooth up the edge. So I don't have anything that I can make an inch and a quarter hole with so I'll just whittle it out and make it bigger. Well you can probably see or you would have seen on the time lapse you know I drilled around those the perimeter there. And I want to try something I haven't tried before. You know I've used this Baxter belt sander before on different things but I thought you know let's see if I can do something with the hole. Clean it up. Let's see.
see how that grommet fits. Nice. <laughs> Can't complain about that, can you? Okay. Let's move on. You can probably hear the rain. No surprise. I'm going to try something here. Let me get that cap off. There we go. So if I were to feed this in, uh, yeah, I may have to unbolt everything. It's close. It's pretty close. Probably have to unbolt it and feed it all in as an assembly. So. Yep. That's pretty close. I think I can live with that. If I could just get... That may be the only concern right now is if this bend is going to clear that corner. It's going to be very close. I may have to I may have to compensate. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm, I'm probably going to take all this back apart, fit the tubes on, and see how they fit in there. If I have to, I can move the condenser, you know, either direction, um, you know, one hole. And the beauty of these tubes is you can bend them. You know, so if something's not exactly where you want it, you can tweak these things and compensate. So, yeah, I'll take that back apart, put the tubes on. And see how it looks. Okay, I moved the brackets on the condenser this direction, which allows for the condenser to move that direction. <laughs> now we'll see how much room we gain. And again, you may have to massage the tubes a little bit to make them move. Uh, this one, I did reshape it just slightly to get it where it's at. But the upper one really didn't take any effort. So, there you can see that, and you can tuck that back in. And of course the idea is that you put these in kind of together. Should be enough clearance. Should be. Let me see if I can do something here. Get this plastic off the end. Then you have to manipulate the gasket in place, or the grommet, I should say. And there's probably various ways to do this. You know, you could put the grommet or assemble the tubes, slip the grommet around the tubes, and then <clears throat> work them in together. I'm trying to do this without getting my head in front of the camera. <laughs> So you can see, there's a little bit of fitment issue here. And what you can do is, you know, you figure the top one, it's right where it belongs, fits very well. 
So the lower one you may have to hand manipulate. These are aluminum tubes. They will bend fairly easy, but you don't want to be attached to the condenser while you're doing it. Sometimes I've done stuff where I've taken a screwdriver and put inside a tube to give me some leverage to bend it, you know, to reshape it. This one may take a little bit more effort. I mean, it works. It's going to be fine, but I'd rather have it up here in that hole more centered. So, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a little bit It's a little bit low. But I may have to manipulate that a little bit and get it into place. Okay, I've reshaped the lower tube a little bit. That's a lot better. Nice and square. So, I'm not going to go through the effort of putting the grommet back in, but you get the idea. Now, on the other side, you know, you may manipulate the lines a little bit because of how close they are to each other. And I'll show you that in just a second. So, if you need to, you can spread them apart a little bit clear the fittings, but again, it, the aluminum tubes bend fairly easy, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so I had to make sure. <laughs> Grommet fits very nice. The wiggle room. I'm happy with that. Alright, at this point in the instructions, after the condenser is in place and the tubes are in place, it talks about connecting the dryer. Very quickly in the instructions, do not remove the caps from the dryer. The dryer contains a desiccant that will quickly absorb moisture from the air causing it to lose effectiveness. For this reason, Vintage Air recommends that the dryer remains capped until the installer is ready to evacuate the system. Okay. Well, I can't evacuate the system anyway because I don't have the equipment. But I'm not going to do probably anything with the dryer. And at this point, I just want to show you, you know, the dryer is connected to the condenser with this tube right here. And it talks about mounting it on the shock tower. Now, of course, the Brooklyn Pony doesn't have a shock tower, so this will have to come later. But I'm going to show you where it will go and at least give you some idea. Now, these are the clamps that come with it. There's two clamps that wrap around the dryer, squeeze it into place held in with a couple of little sheet metal screws. There's also um, a binary switch right here that attaches to it. And there is a clamp here which I'm sure is to hold that hose still. But I'm going to show you, oh and there's of course some wiring that goes to the binary switch. Well I would assume it goes to the binary switch. Yeah, we'll figure that out later. Okay, so I'm going to show you where this will likely go. But, again, I can't put it in place even to test it. Alright, so here's that tube. And this will attach to the smaller diameter tube coming off of the condenser. I do like that they put caps on everything to keep moisture out. But, for this, I'm just going to get it connected. And if you'll notice, this has a 90 degree elbow. Well, let me tell you that that, you have to turn the hose 180 degrees so that the 90 degree elbow is facing to the rear of the car because there's an in and an out on the dryer. And again, I'm not going to take the caps off, but this would attach to the inside, the flow going to the rear. It would attach here. And then, you know, I have to figure out the attachment point for the dryer. And that'll come later once I get the panels in here that block off the um, rest of the apron opening. But basically it'll end up roughly in this location. Roughly. 
I think that takes care of all of the front area for the installation or at least a mock-up of the vintage air system and of course this is a Griffin radiator and I want to point something out that I just just noticed that may or may not be a problem so I'm going to look for feedback on this this radiator is for the stock configuration of a Ford 302 or in this case a 347 so if you'll notice the upper inlet is on the passenger side and the lower inlet is on the passenger side so this could be a little bit of a conflict with the front runner system and I'm assuming a reverse flow water pump the neck or the outlet is on the driver's side hmm unless well I guess we have to come up with a hose of some sort that will go from the driver's side over to the passenger side I know whenever the radiator was bought you know the it should be fine that this is a stock configuration radiator but I don't think it was considered or understood that the outlet would be on the driver's side so if anybody has any input on that by all means share some information maybe a part number for a hose there is still going to be you know a water neck up here on the intake manifold and of course this will be um, discussed later on I did have a conversation with the owner and he is going to an EFI system hopefully we can just keep this intake manifold on here I don't want to take this off but if we can use this intake manifold and this is an Edelbrock RPM air gap so hopefully there's a system that bolts to this and we can leave it all together otherwise I don't know what what the plan is um, but there will be a water neck obviously that goes on here that will come to the upper radiator inlet and you have the two ports down here for the heater hoses those will come into play later uh, I'm not sure I guess you know they had to design it I don't know I guess this gets a little confusing because your port is here and your hose is very much in line with that tube and then this one being you know facing down well we'll have to figure that out when I get to that point but that's where it's at right now and I think it looks good but still problems to resolve okay that's gonna be the end of this video so this is Brooklyn Pony part 46 B and I'm going to make a Brooklyn Pony part 46 C and with that video I'm going to work on installing or test fitting the airbox assembly that's gonna go up underneath the dash and hopefully there's no conflict with that but we'll find out now again as I point out in this video maybe a conflict with the lower radiator hose if somebody has some input there maybe has a part number or something that will snake that over from the driver side to the passenger side I would appreciate that that'll help out a bunch uh, I have talked to the owner about the balancer situation so that is being worked on we'll get that resolved as soon as we can and once that is done, then I can bolt the pulley on and verify that everything lines up. Now, one of my followers that follows me on Facebook had, did mention that there may be some conflict with the depth of the balancer or the main shaft because of the double roller timing chain. I don't know that that's going to be a concern. I think they would probably have designed it to accommodate that setup but I don't know for sure again I'll do some measuring fitting whatever it takes to figure out what we're gonna need for the balancer but that is being worked on so beyond that you know I talked about making the hole for the tubes that come from the condenser to through the firewall and hopefully you got some good information with that those tubes you can you can manipulate them you know to get them where you need them I know that the upper tube 
once I move the condenser to the left or to the well to the driver's side once I moved it that direction it fit almost perfect but the lower tube had to be adjusted so you know that's just the way it is other than that I think things are going smoothly and I hope to have another video up very soon now I still need to do I will do a drawing on this video based on the last video so again I'll do a little giveaway and as I did it before with the first one that I started doing this you need to leave a comment and a thumbs up on this video now what I will do is go back to the previous video which would be 46A and I'll do that random picker like I did before and I'll do a drawing and see who gets a prize <laughs> so let's do that and we'll finish this out so at this point there's 86 comments on this video and the system the YouTube random picker will isolate if there's any duplicates so it only does one submission there's uh, 1827 views which is great 163 thumbs up and one thumbs down so so I've copied the URL I'll go to the random picker enter the URL get my YouTube comments now this says amount of unique commenters 41 okay so now I'll go to start and we'll see what comes up this says winner is DP let's see comment is great video Barry the real world scenarios add to your content and interchange with your subscribers so keep up the good work I'm puzzled by your measurement from the face of the harmonic balancer to the block discussion in the comment and why the timing mark indicator interferes or interferes you know that's a good point point. and I mentioned that I did a comment on that video that I mismeasured and it was supposed to be uh, 3.750 was what the actual measurement was so good comment so DP is now the winner for this drawing okay so DP has won the drawing and I'll put a message on that video letting them know that they won and then also obviously I've noted it here so we'll exchange an email maybe an address whatever it takes and send the prize to DP now as I pointed out before I can't currently send stuff to others countries <laughs> let's say it is very expensive to send stuff to Australia or overseas anywhere so I'm trying to limit this to the United States Canada and I'm sorry for that but that's just the way it is as I mentioned before I used to get a discount with my job but since I'm retired I no longer get that discount so it's quite expensive thanks for your understanding by all means now as it is as, as I said leave a comment on this video thumbs up and you'll be entered into the next drawing which will be on the 46 C for the other part of the installation so I want to thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for helping this channel grow and until next time take care of yourselves See ya. And give you... Now, this video... Thanks for the driver receives contains a desiccant that will quickly 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 quickly.